Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So I have a few things I'd like to go over today, but first, let's just start off with the giveaway. So as you know, anybody that's followed me for a little bit knows that um, I've been getting a lot of support in, over the years from Super Clean. They've been a great supporter of the channel and they reached out and asked me if I wanted to give away some products. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. And the giveaway is real simple. Uh, all you gotta do is just leave a comment down in the section below and then in a week or so, I will run a quick random comment picker and whoever I pick is the person that will win a gift package uh, shipped directly from Super Clean. Super Clean makes a great degreaser, and uh, if you want to try it out for yourself, go ahead and enter down below, and uh, hopefully you win. Okay, now that that's out of the way, um, my channel recently hit 25,000 subscribers, which is mind-blowing. I mean, I've been around on YouTube for about 10 years, and so it's not like, um, it's not going to be breaking any records anytime soon as far as um, channel growth speed or anything. But for me, I never could have imagined that I would ever have a YouTube channel with 25,000 subscribers. Especially for the few of you that have been following along, you know that um, my uploads have been very few and far between um, as of late. And that's just due to some, some changes that have happened in my life. And so, unfortunately, YouTube has had to take a back burner, a back seat, I guess, to... Um, the other things that are going on in my life but I still upload from time to time and I try I'm trying not to make it reviews all the time um, as far as the the VW Beetle is concerned um, I mean I, I feel like the the people have spoken and so I'm not going to do as many uploads on the Beetle um, and that's fine because it's very difficult to not only to film and work on the Beetle, but I'm also spending a lot of time just learning for the first time how to do things, and that just adds to the amount of uh, time it takes to, to work on that. I do have some projects coming up in the future, um, fun little things, nothing major. I am also working on projects off camera just because they need to get done. So that is kind of the update to the future of this channel. It's still here, I'm still standing, and I'm still going to be uploading. It just may not be as frequent as, like I said, the few of you that actually follow along are used to. Um, most of my engagement with the YouTube community is through random videos and through like suggested videos. And so a lot of my views are from non-subscribers anyway. I would say, if I looked at my analytics, I would say maybe 97% of my views come from people who are not subscribed to the channel. And so that 3% of you that are coming back and watching, I thank you very much. Um, and I want you to know that I'm trying to work on quality over quantity, and hopefully that will manifest itself here soon in the future. So I promised you a walkthrough. I recently had some visitors to my shop. It was a youth group. They were wanting to do Pinewood Derby cars and so I had them come over and um, work on uh, their cars and so they used some of the some of the less uh, intimidating power tools and um, they also um, painted their cars while they were here and um, so when I have visitors, I'm always forced to clean up the shop a little bit. So now that it's organized and it's been rearranged, uh, I'd like to walk through it with everybody and show you what uh, what's changed and what's stayed the same over the years. So we'll start here at uh, the main entrance. And if we go into the corner behind the door, this is kind of where I keep a lot of metal. Um, I kind of just have a little stack of metal back here, just scrap metal mostly. Um, I hang on to old license plates in case I need some aluminum for something. I got my press here. I've got my parts cleaner right here <clears throat> um, with a bunch of cleaning supplies stacked on top and below. Um, working down the wall here up high, um, things that you may never see. I've got my, uh, my heater, my shop heater. That's a mineral oil tank for soaking cutting boards. Here's my drill press, and then here's the start of my 
miter saw station. It's about, I don't remember, I really don't remember how long this miter saw station is. I think it's about 14 to 16 feet long. It's got several drawers that are in various states of completeness. Um, I finished all the upper drawers with handles and drawer fronts, but the lower drawers, it's just easier to have them raw like that with the labels. Up here is kind of just my miscellaneous storage. I keep all of my solvents, my paints. What else? Um, just all of my finishing supplies. I've got gallon jugs of glue that I use for sealing bowl blanks. Um, I've got a, a little mini oven up there. Um, my track saw, my Craig jig. Some scrap wood is kept up there. You can see there's a motorcycle gas tank up there. There's just, it's just miscellaneous storage. So back in the back corner is where I have my dust collection system. And I have a couple of videos out on this and how I built this. It's a two-stage system that I built out of a Harbor Freight um, dust collector unit. And it does a really good job. Um, even when I accidentally overflow this, um, emptying out my filter and my catch bucket is very simple. Um, I love it and I have not seen a need to upgrade it. I couple that with my um, air filtration unit up here and that pretty much takes care of any airborne dust in the shop. I'm swinging around here is my clamp rack. It's pretty modest. I don't have a lot of clamps yet. It's something that I do plan on investing a little bit more in in the future because I do, I just do, I need some nice, you know, Bessie clamps or something for that would just help me keep things nice, straight and flat um, when I do like tabletop glue ups and other glue ups that need to stay flat. For some reason, my my uh, table saw sled, my cross cut sled is over here. It's just I had it moved out of the way for when I had the guests. And all this wood that you see here piled up, I'm I'm working on. I think it's six um, sets of plantation shutters. Those are the shutters with the big louvers that you know that you can move up and down with a with a little control rod. Here's here's a, one of the louvers. I mean, here's all of the louvers that I've made for those six panels and um, they're sitting here on top of a stack of recently milled lumber. Um, I, I still occasionally will have people offer me logs to cut up and use and um, so I have there's some cherry down at the bottom and I think the rest is maple. Uh, some of it's spalted and then I have a bunch of walnut that I'm storing outside right now just because it's so susceptible to um, to worm activity that I caught I saw some worms in it I just didn't want those worms to mature into beetles and then have the beetles fly around in my shop and lay their eggs in all my other wood okay this wall here this would be the uh, the, the wall that faces the main street that my house is on got my jointer Back here, I've got my planer. It's actually behind the bandsaw right now just because the bandsaw was being used for the Pinewood Derby cars, but normally the, the planer is out here. And so this is kind of where my additions, the new additions to the shop start. So on the jointer, I upgraded the cutter head to a helical head, and I did the same thing on my planer, and they're great. I do have a slight balancing issue with this one, so it makes this vibrate a little bit more, but it's not to the point where it will be damaging anything. It's just a little loud. Um, I did buy myself a Festool Domino. I always meant to do a video on it, just because I used to have, for joining two pieces of wood together, I had um, several methods that I could use. I had a mortising tool, I had a mortising attachment for my drill press, I have my Craig jig, I have a doweling jig, I've got chisels that I could do, you know, hand cut mortise and tenon joints if I was crazy. Um, but, you know, this kind of does probably 95% of all of the things that all those other tools could do, and it's in such a small package, it just made a lot of sense for me to get a Festool Domino. 
This is the $50 bandsaw that I picked up off, off of Facebook Marketplace. It's a great bandsaw. This is a big old 17 inch bandsaw that I bought off of Facebook Marketplace as well. I got it for a really good price. I did a video about that a long time ago when I bought it. Here's more uh, lumber storage here. I've got a lot of oak right now that I'm storing because I'm getting ready to make some furniture for my children's uh, bedrooms. And this is literally the back burner of the shop, okay? So this is the CNC project that I've never finished. I, I still have everything and it's, you know, it's pretty close. I'd say we're probably 80% of the way there. But um, other things have kind of taken priority over that. You know, this I was doing a bunch of laser reviews and I needed space to set up the lasers. And this laser right here, this is the a taser. Um, L20, I believe is what it was called. And it's a really good laser. I did a review video on that. Up against the garage doors here, I have my drum sander. Another, this is, I think this was a Craigslist pickup, which was a really good price. This is my 15 inch, um, 100 year old disc sander that still works. It's all original. This is a great machine. And again, this was like a Facebook marketplace pickup. I really don't buy new unless I absolutely have to because these used tools, they don't get used that much and then they end up getting sold for a really good price. This is the grinder that I just uh, not too long ago made a video about. Uh, so it's on its stand, movable stand, and it's, it's a nice little uh, setup right here. I like this. I like having it to be as portable as it is. Rolling around to this side of the shop. This is actually the south wall of the shop. This is all of my mechanics and metalworking stuff, okay? So just all my mechanics tools here, and then a whole bunch of other tools there. You see a couple of forges. I got some batteries charging back there. All of my, you know, automotive lubes and fluids and everything are up on that shelf. Um, and then I have my air compressor that I always meant to, I always made it, meant to make a video about that air compressor too, and I never did. When I was doing my research, I found out that most brands that you can buy in the big stores are all made in the same factory. It was really interesting research that I did. Um, another thing was they all have this Made in USA sticker on them somewhere, but that Made in the USA sticker only applies to the tank. It has nothing to do with the motor or the pump or anything else, just the tank. So I thought that was a little sketchy, a little deceiving, but it is how it is. They all come from the same factory. So my advice to you would be, you know, like this one versus the Husky versus the Cobalt versus the DeWalt. They all have this exact same pump unit. They might have a slightly different motor, but generally the same. And so if you're in the market for buying a 60 gallon compressor like this, just find the cheapest one that's that's available. You're just paying for the name after you pay for the for the unit this cost this is pre-covid prices mind you this only cost me like three hundred dollars um it doesn't cost that anymore but it was the cheapest one i bought it at a local farm and fleet store and it's been great it's a great little unit okay so i got my mig welder with my gas bottle back here um you know nothing to say this was an open box purchase i made a video about that on on my channel and this has turned out to be a great little unit here I, I love it it works good I wish I could use it more I just don't really do a lot of welding projects maybe maybe well I do I have welding projects in the future for this guy but like I said the analytics has told me that a big no thank you for my beetle um, content and and that's fine because I built my audience on woodworking and product reviews not necessarily uh, you know restoring a beetle so okay I got a sandblaster here with my cyclonic setup and everything and this still works pretty good I do need to make some changes um, you know people ask me about this all the time because it's a pretty popular video um, they ask a lot about the siphoning system the siphon system works great the problem I have with the siphon system is I used like this PEX tube which isn't very flexible and so it it tends to pop off the gun inside the cabinet and then also where it passes through um, into the hopper, you can see um, sand leaks out. So I need to get a grommet on there or something to seal it off. But besides that, 
it's really good. Underneath is just where I store all the um, other abrasives and everything that I use in Sandblaster. So that brings us to the center of the shop here. Um, I have my router, ta router table that I picked up at um, an auction and it's been great. It comes with that Woodpecker's um, router plate, you know, that you can adjust from the top. It has a really powerful port cable router in it and uh, this thing's a beast. As you can see, I was cutting these louvers. I mean, look at this. Look at this bit, you know, and um, I've got this nice tall um, fence for this to help keep everything stable and I usually will rig up a whole bunch of feather boards and everything just because I do not want to get my fingers close to something that big. This is the uh, saw stop table saw. Um, I'm going to get my trash can out of the way here. So this is my saw stop. Um, it's probably the best purchase I've ever made for my shop. Uh, I just, with the peace of mind that comes with uh, the safety technology, obviously I don't think I have to really uh, pitch that to anybody. But it's just such a really well-made saw and it's so precise. Um, it's the best saw I've ever owned. I've always upgraded. Um, I've owned maybe four or five saws in my life. And I've always tried to upgrade or get better. And my last saw was a Grizzly, which was a great saw. But uh, it pales in comparison to this guy. Um, underneath here I have some Evaporust and some Degreaser. And I've got fire extinguishers all throughout this place. I think I have four fire extinguishers just in this shop alone. A um, couple other cool additions. These mag switch uh, feather boards are amazing. Um, they use these little modules where you just turn the knobs. And uh, it locks them, locks them down. And um, you know, so I have this regular feather board. I've got one, um, a vertical feather board here, and I've got one for resawing on the big bandsaw that is put away somewhere. This is my outfeed table that I built out of old pallet skids. Um, it's solid, you know. Nothing's changed with that. Got my little forge underneath there that I uh, built out of an ammo can. That's a pretty popular video. This is my uh, workbench that was made out of a hydraulic lift. And so I can, I can raise and lower it at will. It's pretty uh, nice to have for when I, for example, this tool is a very tall tool. If I had this at normal working height, I'd be up here trying to do sanding. And so it's nice to be able to lower it down and really get behind the work that I'm doing. This is an okay sander. It's not the best. It, it has a lot of vibration. I can't do real precise work with it. I'd like to get a proper oscillating spindle sander one of these days, but uh, just not right now. This is something I picked up that I've always meant to do a restoration video on. Uh, this is a monster Wilton bullet vise that came from the railroad. Um, I mean, this thing is rock solid. I'd love to do a restoration video on this. I need to find some the wear parts you know like you can see like it's got a little bit of slop to it um and you know so there's bushings and things that can that can be purchased there you go to replace uh you know just to get it back but i mean it closes pretty good there's very little um misalignment in the jaws but there is a little bit and that just has to do with those worn bushings so this would be a great restoration project someday. Here we go with my little, unfortunately with this guy, um, I've had to retire this. Uh, the, um, there's a half nut underneath there that in, that's what engages this whole vise and that thing is just so worn out that this vise doesn't really do a very good job anymore. So it's basically here for looks. Um, I would love to get a pattern maker's vise at some point, and if I did, then I would totally modify this whole thing to accommodate the pattern maker's vise. But for the time being, this just sits here and looks pretty. And then I just have a little belt grinder here. So that's uh, the shop tour. Not a whole lot has changed, just some small upgrades. Some, I mean, they're not small. The, the helical upgrade on my jointer and my planer has just made everything so much easier. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. I don't, I don't have to push things so hard through the jointer or, or use too much effort to joint my wood. 
and the planer can handle any type of wood. You know, it doesn't matter if it's got a complex grain structure to it. Um, you can even do in grain cutting boards with it um, because it doesn't cut off a whole 12 inch long slice in one pass. You know, it's just each of those tiny little teeth are just taken off little bits and uh, it makes a big difference on the quality of the finish of the wood. The Domino is a game changer also because, you know, there's no setup at all. You just basically maybe turn a knob and then you are making your loose tenon joinery. The only thing it really can't do is if you want to do some type of decorative through tenon work or something, at that point you'll be pulling out the chisels. Um, and then sometimes it's overkill for certain things too, like face framework or something. And that's why I hung on to my Craig jig. But I did get rid of the mortiser just because it took up so much space and that thing weighed like 125 pounds. It was a beast. The only other thing that I've changed in here is I've had to change out some of the lights. Um, I'd made a video a long time ago about the lights that I used in my shop. You might see in the video the intensity uh, kind of varies between the lights and that's because I am in the process of swapping lights out. I don't we go over here. You might see it in the video, but you know, there's one that's going out right there. And then there's a couple that are just out. And so they need to be replaced. And, and I do have um, a box of replacement lights and I've been replacing them on an as needed basis. And, um, and so that's why you'll see things like that. They have a different way to set up um, and so I have these dangling wires and everything until I get them all situated and figured out. So that's really it. Um, I will provide, as long as I can find them, I will provide a long list of links in the description below of everything that I can find on Amazon that I shared with you today in this video. Thank you for sticking around to this point. Not everybody does, and this is kind of just a long talking video. So thank you very much. You guys are the real ones. That's all I really have to share with you today. Don't forget, enter for the giveaway down in the uh, comment section below. You can put anything down there. It doesn't matter. And I will draw that in a week, and I will make a video to announce the winner. I got lots of good, great stuff coming up, so uh, please stick around, stay subscribed, or hit that subscribe button if you already aren't. Thanks everybody for coming and visiting me today. My name is Tom. This here is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.